Today's presenters will be Gus Chacon, President and CEO of Project Assistance, and Bill Gudnerum, our Microsoft Project Consultant. I'd like to introduce our first speaker, Gus, who founded Project Assistance in 1996 to help companies achieve better, faster, and more cost-effective project-based results. Gus is a recognized portfolio and project management expert who has published many popular articles and books on the subject and is frequently asked to present and teach topics of interest surrounding project management, especially having to do with Microsoft Project specifically. Gus? Thanks, Daniel. And thanks, Bill, for being here today. And thanks for everybody that took time out of your day to join us this afternoon. So today we're going to get through some of the uh, terminology and some of the concepts of what has been happening as, as Microsoft Project has moved into the Office 365 uh, platform, which is really the Microsoft Cloud. So that's kind of our goal today. And, and the way we're going to cover that is first uh, introducing the uh, numerous uh, terms that are out there. Uh, if, if you've been familiar with the terms, in the past, uh, for, let's say for Project 2013, you might see some new ones out here, or at least different bundles of how this uh, technology can be acquired and, uh, and provisioned. So we'll talk about that. Um, we'll, we'll go through some of the, we'll break the we're going to break the terminology down through the Microsoft Cloud terminology. Um, and when we, when we uh, do that, uh, we're also going to do a demonstration just of the different capabilities. And you're going to see uh, different ways that these uh, components are licensed, and so we'll show you some of the differences between the components. Uh, project uh, on premise, you know, sort of traditional Microsoft project, uh, project server, talk about some of the ter terminology there. And then we'll um, talk about the solution approach. How do you, how do you leverage the capability of this technology? How do, how do you make it useful? And deliver value for your project management operations. Uh, we'll, so we'll talk very briefly about the partnering model that Microsoft has. Uh, we'll do a prerequisite checklist. You know, how, how do you get started? Uh, what are the things that have to happen? What's the sequence if this is something you're uh, planning to embark on as um, an organization? And then finally, uh, as Dan mentioned, uh, we'll take uh, questions. Uh, you can submit questions anytime during the presentation and we'll try to we'll try to catch them on the fly if we see them um, and we'll uh, certainly leave some time at the end so you know we talk about the uh, sort of the barcodes if you will or the product codes um, these, these are the uh, uh, sort of the formal ter uh, terminology in the current release of 2016 so you see there's kind of two swim lanes here there's a there's a cloud strata at the top, and there is a role strata in the middle, which talks about project managers, team members, portfolio managers, resource managers, uh, stakeholders, um, executives, those kinds of things. And then the bottom swim lane, you know, on uh, premise. Uh, so um, you'll see some of the uh, sort of parallels from the column standpoint, right? You see Project Professional for Office 365 in the cloud. Um, you see Project Standard and Professional uh, on the on-premise. Uh, Project Online, um, another terminology we'll talk about, talk about Project Line, talk about Project Online, talk about the CALS, Project Server. So these are some of the, uh, uh, the terminology we want to be able to uh, discuss and really demonstrate today. Okay, so um, some of the newer type terminologies, if you've been uh, um, around Office 365, especially for, for Project Online, um, even if you've been around this recently, there are some new sort of packages or bundles. So we'll, you know, we'll talk about some of those things. Um, and again, we'll just separate these things from the uh, on-premise and the uh, on-the-cloud or off-premise uh, capabilities. Okay, so our first poll is going to be uh, just to keep you a little interactive. Uh, are you planning to? Uh, are you planning to move the project online? So you should see the follow up on your screen, and we'll show the aggregate, I believe.
Okay, so any surprises? Um, we have neck and neck already there. We're planning to go. So that's uh, almost half are uh, either there or about to get there. Um, we have uh, 8% uh, going with a competitor. I'm so sorry about that. And um, no, no, we're sticking with the project on premise. So uh, very interesting. 23, 23, and another one that adds up to 46. So, and an 8% are uh, uh, to, to round it out. So that's uh, pretty interesting. Thanks, thanks for your uh, responses on that. That's an interesting uh, transformation. We're seeing a, a lot of move to, to the on premise. And so I, mean, I guess I. Shouldn't be surprised that 50% is uh, is the number. Any comments, Bill? No, it just says, uh, as you said, that the trend seems to be that a lot more going to project online, particularly with Office 365 coming on strong for Microsoft. But there are advantages in the, a lot that still prefer to have everything on premises and uh, keep it within their control as well. Yeah, yeah. So it'd be interesting. Um, for a number of years, when we went out to the Microsoft conferences, as the, the project partner conferences, uh, Microsoft would share um, the percentage of desktops that have moved into the cloud, and it kind of got stuck at one point, and they stopped talking about it. So I think <laughs> I think uh, recently uh, there's there definitely a definitive movement, movement uh, really more. Uh, uh, easily moving into the cloud uh, for people who don't want to take the on-premise responsibilities. And we'll talk about that. We'll do some comparisons as we get in, a little further into it. Um, so one of the one of the terminologies, Office 365. You know, for those of you who have have seen it, this should look familiar. But you know, one of the great things about about the uh, the on uh, off-premise uh, Office 365 is if you're in Office 365. And you've got your email, and you've got your SharePoint, and you've got your Yammer, and uh, contacts, and, and all those things out there. That uh, project just becomes one more tile, uh, one more uh, accessible app. Uh, if you're licensed for it, it shows up automatically in the tray. And, and um, um, you know, our, you know, from our services standpoint, um, the time we spend uh, standing up a server, configuring a server. Uh, you know, provisioning the server. Uh, uh, you know, a lot of that has to do with making sure a project sitting on on SQL and sitting on a Windows uh, 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 server platform um, that goes away. Uh, uh, however, there's a lot that goes on be before that. You know, there's there's a lot of acquisition of hardware and software, and you know, uh, a lot of things our customers really do um, almost on their own. Right? They've they've got their own departments oftentimes to do this. So. So the, the Office 365 kind of pushes that all off, off the uh, off the list of things that have to happen. Uh, so the primary components we're going to talk about today in the cloud are really the Project Cal or Project Web App, and the Cal stands for Client Access License. This is the capability to go through the browser, and uh, and while you can go to the browser to Project Online, um, there's an expectation that that you would uh, use a license. To get there, so there are different levels. We'll talk about that uh, in a few minutes. Uh, Project Online is the, um, if you're familiar with the, uh, the, uh, the on-premise terminology, uh, this is what we would probably call Project Server, right? So this is the, uh, the central hub of data that gets published, that gets distributed out to the to the views, and then Project Professional, what, what, what most of us know as the, the the scheduling engine, right? Even before Project Server was out there, you know. The original Microsoft project is that capability to uh, have a powerful engine on the desktop and, and create MPP files, and in this case, uh, those files can be published into Project Online. So the uh, uh, the typical licensing in, in the cloud-based solutions is a, a you know a per user basis. Um, you can purchase uh, standalone plans, or uh, standing alone meaning it's the only thing you're using. Maybe you're, we, you know, we have customers that go directly to Project Online that are not already in Office 365. We also have, uh, I would say, probably the majority. We just say Bill are already using 365. Yes. Yeah. So, so, so the most common thing we see is that natural move, and 
one of the reasons I think we're seeing a little bit uptick of uh, the movement into the into the cloud is is that uh, organizations are already deciding to go to Office 365, and therefore uh, the strategy I don't want to say dictates, but certainly uh, indicates that it probably makes sense to be in the cloud with with, with projects. So we've got Project Online. This, you know, this, this enables the organization to um, uh, do things collaborative across multiple projects. Right? Project Online is is the uh, uh, the central hub of the data that is is uh, published to, to the server. Uh, Project Pro for Office 365. So this, this is um, a project project on the desktop that, that can uh, connect. To the server, it comes with a uh, project uh, client access license. Um, it's um, always up to date, right? So we, you know, as as we go forward into the future, um, not exactly sure at what point um, this will happen, but we might we might see those 2016 um, names uh, drop off of this, right? I mean, essentially, if you're in the cloud. Uh, and, and, a, and a new version comes out, uh, you'll be there uh, automatically, especially with Project Online, right? So, so the, the the advantages of uh, software as a service is that uh, that that service is provided uh, by Microsoft in, in their cloud platform. And then, of course, we have uh, the ability to come in from the browser. In this case, Project Light. Um, is the ability to, for as they talk about here, team members uh, to manage tasks, collaborate, and, and submit timesheets. We're going to go a little deeper into some other capabilities. Uh, it's not, that's not the only flavor of the cow, so we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit more in terms of the ability to uh, be involved in the portfolio capabilities as well. So one thing, uh, 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 this may not be exactly what you're paying. For your organization, this is uh, this is a snapshot of what you would see on the Microsoft um, website. But essentially, there are three primary package options with three sets of licensing, and this is per user per month, as you can see here. Um, so we'll, we'll we'll talk a little bit about some of the differences between Project Online Essentials, um, Project Online Professional, and Project Online Premium. So as as you go through this. Uh, Next set of slides. What you're going to see are are the capabilities that are shared across all three. And then, as we get further down the list, you'll see that some of those um, features and functions uh, come only at the higher price points. Uh, so I'll come back to that in a minute. One other thing that's, that that customers are asking about is this question of, well, I have invested in project. I have project on premise. And, and how do I trade this in, or how do I convert to the cloud? So this is a, uh, a summary of some sample pricing that if you're, if, if what, what, what it's called is project cloud add-ons. How can you add on or, or, or pay into the foundation that you already have and, and, and uh, supersize it, if you will? Right. So you can see the, the gray boxes rec uh, represent uh, a current investment. So if you've got Project Professional and you want to go to Project Online uh, Premium, uh, it's, it's $20 a month uh, increase, so that's cheaper than starting from scratch. You can see Online Professional add-on is, is uh, almost around the earth if you, have, if you already own Project Professional. Uh, the Project Cal, uh, if you're going to go into Online, that's uh, you see the pricing there. Project on, uh, Online Professional. Uh, from the Cal is is a different jump, right? So if you have professional already, it's a four dollar jump. If you have only the Cal, you can convert that to professional uh, by adding seventeen dollars a month. Uh, the Project Online Essentials add-on. So if you've got a Cal, it's a small uh, up charge to get into the Microsoft Cloud. Um, and Project Standard. Uh, there's a promo going on. I think it ends at the end of June. I forget the exact date. It might be in the fine print here. But um, if you're interested, let us know. So, so Project Standard uh, uh, is in the next set of definitions. But Project Standard is, is the project en project uh, Microsoft Project Engine without the capability to connect to 
the cloud or to the on-premise uh, project server. So that's that's what that's sort of referring to. So there's a, a promotional pricing uh, to encourage you to go somewhere in the cloud. So 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 the, the other the other difference is here. You know, besides the pricing, uh, if we go back to the original online essentials, online professional, online premium, you'll see these three columns here are now telling us, well, what do you get between those three three prices, right? So, um, and if, if you're familiar with Project Web App, um, updating tasks, uh, this is typically from the browser, a project uh, team member would be updating tasks uh, either by suggesting schedule date changes or uh, oftentimes putting in a timesheet. Uh, project Online Professional, Project Online Premium, I presume that means that because you have professional and project online premium, because you have the, the, the scheduling engine, you're still going in, uh, you still have the capability to go into the Cal, uh, but you can also update directly from the uh, from the client, from the scheduling engine. Does that sound right to you, Bill? Yes. Okay. Uh, submitting timesheets, that's a different way of uh, updating tasks, so same capability. Um, so, so one's mostly, uh, the first one's mostly probably suggesting uh, modifications, adding tasks, changing dates. The second one is actually putting in uh, time uh, against you know, actual status against uh, tasks. And the difference there is you, the update tasks, you can just update your tasks that you're working on that are assigned to you with the project, but the, it does have a full-blown timesheet capability. So that's what the second entry is. If you wanted to track your vacation, leave time, as well as your work time, it, uh, it does have full timesheet capabilities. Right. And this is uh, this is something that's been uh, uh, sort of two features that that can stand alone or can really be combined as well, right? So if you're using timesheets, you can also do the updates to the project plan as well. Uh, collaboration. Uh, this would be um, um, can share documents, right? So we're talking about SharePoint primarily here. Um, so so if you you know again, all three packages include this. So in this case. If, we're at, if we had the simple uh, client access license through the browser, we still have the access to the SharePoint uh, capabilities, which, which uh, includes synchronizing your projects with SharePoint task lists. Right, so, that's, so these are really two SharePoint features. Um, when we think about task lists, that also includes the risks and the issues. Now we see uh, some things that you don't get with online essential. Right, so project planning and scheduling includes familiar scheduling tools like Gantt charts and building customizable templates. Um, this is where you're going to see some um, things that you can do from project online professional, project online premium. Now, you still can do some planning and scheduling in the browser, but you would have to have a different package. Am I saying that right, Bill? We, we can still do things from the Cal. The Cal continues to become more powerful and more capabilities in the cloud. Um, so, so in this case, if you've got professional pre premium, you're deciding to use some of the limited capabilities in the Cal for scheduling or the more uh, robust capabilities that you would get from professional premium. And if you think of it as essentials would be a team member, they're the people that are getting, receiving their assignments and they, they can log in to everything that's given to them, but they can't do the, the building of the schedules. So Project Online Professional and Premium allows you to actually build and create the schedules. And reporting and business intelligence, again, it's, you know, a lot of these things are going to be uh, served up through the, uh, maybe I should, should have said this earlier, you know, the Cal is really a SharePoint application, right? It's, it's, a, it's a, a very recognizable SharePoint interface. So a lot of these things are still served up through web parts. But again, what you're doing is you're paying set, um, um, additional monthly charge to get those additional capabilities. And, and why would you do that? Well, well uh, somebody who's... Uh, uh, a stakeholder uh, that, that doesn't necessarily need to use the, the scheduling engine, uh, you might pay a little more to get them the, the access to the dashboards, where in the case of a team member, you don't pay that additional money, therefore that first column is blank because they don't need it. So it gives, you, it gives you flexibility in terms of how you're going to spend to access different levels of capabilities depending on people's roles. Uh, Publishing. Projects in the cloud, uh, that's, you know, uh, obvious comes out of the uh, project scheduling capabilities. Uh, doesn't mean you can't publish one from, from 
SharePoint, but if you're going to do a, a publishing a SharePoint list or proposing a project, it's still going to come out of the professional uh, premium uh, licensing packages. Uh, managing project resources, again, think about team members, right? If you're a team member, are you publishing projects? No. Are you managing resources? No. You know, so you, you see the sort of the logic here that uh, we're, we're really moving forward to the people that are managing the projects or managing the people who manage the projects, right, the portfolio folks. Uh, now we see the, yet another set of check boxes to drop off. Now we go into premium, which is really adding on, you know, pro project in general, project online in general has, has primarily two strata of, of major capabilities, right? It's got a portfolio management and a project execution. So now we're going into premium saying, well, if you're going beyond project, project execution and going to the broader view of how you would propose and develop and approve and manage the portfolio, now we see the portfolio scenarios and the demand management across multiple projects. And just a couple more examples, planning and managing the enterprise resources and um, uh, some of the out-of-the-box portfolio reports. So these last four check boxes are really exclusive to the online premium, which is you pay more to get access to the be a portfolio manager or participant in the portfolio. Anything else I missed, Bill? No, we covered it. Okay, well, it's my uh, great pleasure to turn this over to my colleague, um, who's uh, quite an expert on this stuff. And the, the idea here is um, to do some conceptual stuff, right? This, our, our job today is not to teach you how this stuff works, but to be able to see the differences between how, they, how these packages look in real life instead of just seeing check boxes on the screen. Okay, if you can make me a presenter, Gus. That's a good idea, Bill. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Let's see. Yes. Okay. So um, we're, we're going to do a, a quick demo of uh, Project Online, and we're actually using uh, our, our own uh, demo and development environment uh, here. So this is this is running live. And when you first log on, you'll, you'll see you come to a home page here, and uh, it, it's also predicated on the security level that you have. So we talked about those three levels of licensing. Project Professional is essentially your team member, and then Project Professional is uh, really the project manager, and then Project Premium is for portfolio managers. So the, these green tiles that you see here, they will be different based on your security level, and also the uh, the options that you see on the left menu. So I am a, uh, this is with the Premium license in it, so I'm logged on with all the, and um, so, uh, and we'll, we'll go through just quickly each of these different features. The projects is really your portfolio of the projects. Um, tasks, you can assign tasks to people and receive approvals to automatically update your schedules. If there are risks and issues assigned, um, then you'll, you'll be able to click here and see those. So as it, uh, all three licenses get those capabilities. And then when we go down a little farther here, only project managers can see resources and reports, and then premium, uh, we'll also see the strategy, and this is about portfolio management. So a premium user is the only one that sees the strategy section here. Project managers also, they get the, the, the core plus the resources and reports, and then team members or essential only gets the, uh, the top with the, most of the projects that they're assigned to and their tasks and their tasks and any issues or risks that are assigned to them. And also since this is on, on Project Online and Part of 365, if I click up here, and you'll see these are all the different Office 365 features that we have, and Project is, is just one of the, uh, the tiles that we have available to us here to go into Project Online. Okay. I'm going to click here on, on Projects, and this takes us to what they call the Project Center, and this is the portfolio of all of our projects. And it gives us a, a one-line entry for all the different uh, projects that we have loaded to the portfolio. And there are different views with, uh, available that show you different types of data uh, behind the scenes. So um, if I click the drop down here, the, those are the top cost, earn value, summary, tracking, and work. They're all out of the box that come with from uh, when you first sign up with Project Online. 
And then all these that we have prefixed for our, by de demo uh, are different customizations that we put together. So we can decide what fields that we want to show. And you see that it's similar to Microsoft Project. We have the Gantt chart on the right hand side and then the, the data fields in here. You can also create um, um, enterprise fields so that they're specific to your, your own organization. And in this, this example here for a dashboard, we have a project health field and there is just a subjective red, yellow, green that the project manager can update and, and uh, show what their progress is. Complexity is uh, high, medium, and low, and, and that one was uh, just, a, again, another drop down that the project manager updates, but it gives you a sense of where it stands in the portfolio, you know, which are the, the, uh, the more simple or the more complex projects. This one for the schedule indicator, uh, we have different icons that show um, the, 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 the status of uh, comparing our, our projected schedules to the baseline. So if there's no baseline set, it shows as a white flag, and we have a red flag if there's no baseline but it's past due. And then we have other different symbols to say uh, whether it's so many days uh, late. And a lot of these are showing as red because this is our demo data that we don't update uh, every time that we do a demo. But so down here, the, the one shows is green every on time. Uh, yellow is uh, one to, to five days late. Red is more than five. You can control that is if, you, if you've done formulas with Microsoft Project, that's all that it is. It's just you're doing it at the enterprise level in, uh, so that it gets pushed to everybody that's using, using the product. So you create your own uh, folders here. I'm sorry, not folders, your own uh, formulas. Uh, the, this indicators column here, this tells us if we have a schedule associated with it, or if I hover over, it tells us that there are issues or risks or uh, documents being stored and shared with the, the individual projects. And if I click on one of the projects just to, to open it, let me scroll up here. So now it's going to show us all the details about our project. Now, this project has a workflow associated with it, and there are stages that it goes through where you can even automate if you need certain approvals before you can uh, initiate a project or maybe stage gate reviews. Um, it's all uh, built with uh, SharePoint workflows behind the scenes, so you can automate that, that process. And then over on the left here, if I click on where it says Schedule, I should have picked a different one. This one was to demonstrate the, the workflow capability. And let me go back and get another one that has, in this, this case, the, the workflow wasn't, it didn't progress far enough to get to uh, actually developing a project schedule. So, this project here has a schedule. And you can even use templates. If you use templates in Microsoft Project, uh, when you create a new project, you can create it right here in Project Online instead of even having to open Microsoft Project, and it'll generate the, a template schedule for you just by filling in a couple of fields that you define. And uh, so you've got a lot of capabilities here to, to view the schedules. The other thing that's come on uh, a lot more powerful recently is you can now do uh, editing of your project schedules directly here in Project Online. So you can open this exact same project in Microsoft Project on the desktop but you can do the same and uh, a lot of your basic editing uh, right in, in the web app uh, system instead of having to open the Microsoft Project. If you're really heavy duty scheduling and a lot of work with it, you'll still want to use Project on the desktop, but for uh, simple changes or just small projects that don't have a lot of activities. So you can see you can update 50% completes. You can do your indents and outdents, link tasks together. Together we can assign resources to the tasks. Um, so a lot of the, the, the basic things that you used to do in the Microsoft Project, you can now do in Project Online as well. Another nice feature, Gus mentioned this is a, actually a SharePoint application. It's, it's built on top of SharePoint. And if I click on the project site, um, you automatically get a uh, what, what's basically a SharePoint team site. If you're familiar with SharePoint and those team sites, uh, whenever you create a new project, you can have a, a, a project site automatically created. But it's a little bit different than a regular team point. Team, team site from SharePoint in that it has some project management capabilities and those links back and forth into your uh, your overall portfolio. So if uh, we click up here on documents, 
We've got document storage capabilities. These can even be set up in templates. So if you have a standard folder structure you want to use, create a Share, uh, SharePoint type site template, and then it automatically has uh, the folders. And even if you wanted to include template documents, blank documents as a starting place, you can place everything out there. So as soon as you create a new project, you have access to all those deliverables and, and templates and formats that you need without having to search for them somewhere else. It also includes risks and issues right out of the box. So if you wanted to, instead of having to do everything separately in Excel spreadsheets that uh, people store on their you know, one, a separate spreadsheet for every document, everything is together in one system here. So uh, here we can enter in our risks or issues. Risks and issues behave much the same, but it's, uh, it's built in for us. And you can also customize different categories and, and fields that you want to make sense to your organization. But if you don't have anything to start, it gives you, uh, it's already pre-built for you. It gives you a good way to start and uh, handle your risks and issues to maintain the, the projects. I'm going to go back to the, the project area now, back to the portfolio. <coughs> um, and also, if you, you see there's a, a timeline at the top here. So that's a, a new feature particularly on, on project on the desktop, it has the timeline feature. And now they've included that right here in the project center. So you can uh, put different projects up on your timeline from the, the project center looking at the portfolio. Or if you open up an individual project, then you can put specific, more specific tasks and activities onto those, those timelines. So it's a nice graphical way to get a, a quick overview on, on the project and where everything stands. If I click on resources here. This takes us to our, our enterprise resource pool. So we have all the resources listed here. And um, in this case, we've separated them by role, and we've created what they call a generic resource. So for the analyst role here, we have a resource that's a, a generic person. So um, in, and we also have two named people that are analysts, Bob and Laurie. So maybe in a, in a rolling wave fashion, the first three months, you know exactly who the people are that are working on your project. But in the uh, six to nine months, you're not, you're not sure who the specific people will be, but you know you need these certain roles, you can assign activities as a, as, at that role level as an analyst. And it even has some, something they call resource engagement. It lets you assign at a high level by full-time equivalent. So maybe you say that we know we're going to need three analysts for, uh, for nine months on this project, and you can just block them out at the high level without having to create, without having to create specific tasks and assign them to tasks uh, in, the, in the project schedule. So I'm going to select these three resources. And if I click here on resource assignments, it lets us see everything that's assigned to all these different, including the role of analysts and then also by people. And we can see the projects and the specific tasks that are assigned to those. So the nice thing here is working with an enterprise resource pool. And you can see when people are assigned to multiple projects, which in most cases we are, you start to see that. Whereas if you're not using Project Server or Project Online, all those project schedules are separated and there's no good way to really see who's working on what. And the next step, if I click on the capacity planning, now we'll be able to see where we have uh, over allocations. And we can look at, we can analyze this in hours, days, full-time equivalents, and look at it. Uh, the time scale can be by days, weeks, months, quarters. So in this case, we're, uh, we're looking at um, in hours, and we're looking at uh, daily assignments. So I can see, and this, this, much of this depends on, on how you schedule. Some, some projects, like in uh, pharmaceuticals and drug development, they're really long durations. And in other cases, on a construction company, they may be concerned down to day to day who's working on what. So you, uh, it gives you that flexibility, and it'll re recalculate these numbers whether you want to if I switch here from hours to full-time equivalents, it'll just re-swizzle the numbers. And now, so we're showing in full-time equivalents here, so two people. What we do with the, the, those generic role-based role uh, resources, we put them at zero capacity. Because it, if you would say that this is one person or five people, it will overinflate uh, and make you look like you have more people available to work. So the reason our capacity here is only two people is we have two named people. But you can see our demand if we look at this line where every place we're above the line, it shows that we have 
higher demand than when we have people available to, uh, to work on, on the project. And if I scroll down here, this shows us the, uh, the projects that these, these people are working on. So we have uh, availability is how much, money, how much time you have that you could work. So a negative number means we're over allocated. Capacity is how much time you have according to your calendar. So the default calendar is five days a week, eight hours per day. We also have this one that's called uh, business operations. When I mentioned earlier, you have the capability of what they call resource engagement, high level planning instead of having to do individual tasks. So this is for people, uh, non-project work. So these analysts work in a business unit and uh, they may be in high demand to work on a project as a subject matter expert, but they also have to do their day jobs. So what this business operations lets us at a high level say, using full-time equivalents, <clears throat> if I look at Lori down here at the bottom, 90% of her job uh, through, through these uh, is to do her, her uh, normal day job. So if people want her to work on a project, she doesn't have much time available. Bob up here at 25% of his day job, he has more time that he could work as a subject matter expert on, on projects. Now if we come back here, I'm going to click on tasks. Let me scroll up a little farther. <clears throat> so, so now, th these are any tasks that are assigned to me as a team member working on a project. So you see I can, it shows me all the different tasks that I have assigned on the different projects. And I can update uh, my, uh, my progress either by uh, start, finish dates, using uh, percent completes, or even in a timesheet fashion. Over here you can enter the, the time that you work uh, per project per day. We mentioned earlier there is a full timesheet capability. So this is just if you were going to work on, on tasks, but if you enable the timesheet feature, it would show the tasks that you're working on plus let you uh, enter uh, like administrative time that, that you're working or non-work time such as vacation, bereavement, different ways that you want to track uh, all, all the time for, for uh, all, an entire 40 hour week. And the approvals here, as a project manager, when a, a team member submits their, we don't have any pending here, but if I would submit updates uh, on the tasks that I work, then the project manager can click here on the, the approvals and see what those uh, submissions were, review that, and then decide if they want and, and apply it directly to the project schedule. I'm going to go into the, the portfolio side. And this, so in this case, only the, the premium license has these capabilities. And if we, uh, the, the way that they, that they organize this is you have what they call drivers. So if you think of, uh, of strategies, objectives, business drivers, you would define what those drivers are for your organization. And then there's uh, behind the scenes, you describe uh, different levels of these, these um, capabilities, whether it's, if we click and open here, for cost savings, we can say, <clears throat> that for a low, it would be saving less than 25000 And if we say all, all the way to extreme, these categories of low, moderate, strong, extreme, they're out of the box, but your descriptions are what, what you want to uh, work through and, and uh, come up with a, a fairly concrete description so everybody agrees that if we say that this is strong, we, we have a way of measuring that and, and, uh, and, we, and we, we know what that means to say that's strong or, or extreme based on the definitions you create here. And then uh, they have a, a concept called prioritization where based on all these different drivers that you've described, you, you're going to rank and say which ones are more important than others. And using those prioritizations, then you can start doing portfolio, what they call analyses, or it's portfolio modeling to say, um, based on, on the projects in your portfolio, it'll start to say, uh, here's, here's what the cost is of all those projects, and if we say that we have a, a budget of $6 million, these are the projects up at the top where it says selected that you should be working on. They have the best, the best return on base, investment based on those drivers and that prioritiz prioritization that you did against those drivers and the budget you have available. So in this case, the ones that are unselected here, either we didn't have enough money, and these are also the ones that, that don't give us the best return on investment based on those drivers and, and the prioritization. 
And you can also save different scenarios uh, here. So if I wanted to say that uh, if we would raise the budget to seven million and we calculate, then it would figure out, all right, we have enough money now to uh, select more projects. And then you can save all these different scenarios um, so you can go back and see what your different models were. We can also analyze our resources. So based on these projects that we've selected that we have the budget, now it's saying uh, on, on uh, the assignments that we've given to the, to the schedules, either at that high level resource engagement level or even on ta active projects or projects where we've assigned people down to the task level, it's looking at that role and trying to figure out do we have enough people to work on these projects. And in this scenario, um, it, this higher resources, by default it's, it's zero. And then um, if you, uh, in this case here, this one project here, I said let's hire two resources. It figures out which role that we're short on and then tells us now based on, uh, on hiring two resources, now we can do uh, add this project into the mix. And it has various reports and different ways you can analyze this. Um, to, to pretty much detail to go into it, so we'll, we'll just suffice to say that if you want to see uh, which type of resources you had to hire, where were your short on resources, where do you have sur surpluses, um, it has all those different availabilities here for you to analyze that portfolio. And, and the strong part is it lets you do modeling. So you can have these scenarios of hiring X number of resources, increasing or decreasing budget, and save all those scenarios. And then ultimately, you can commit and say we like what our portfolio looks like now by doing the committed documents that we've said we're going with this portfolio scenario and uh, with these projects and these resources at this point. Okay. And uh, there are quite a, there, there are a few reports that come out of the box. Uh, so we won't we'll go into the, the, the reports right now, but there are a couple that come out of the box. They're not real great, but the nice thing is there's this, this new feature that they call OData, which is a connection to let you grab all of your uh, information out of Project Server and render it into Excel into pivot tables. So a lot of people really love Excel. If you, if you like Excel and are good with it, the, the nice thing is now using this OData connection, it's real simple. You just open up Excel and point it to your, to your uh, project server. And I just have a couple snapshots here. These are in PowerPoint, so it doesn't take long to render. But this is uh, something that, that, that took, uh, pulled out of uh, the project server database and puts it into an Excel dashboard uh, where we're using the, the different filtering controls and, and pie charts and all this and uh, you know very simple to get that information out of the out of the system, the database, into pivot tables and then generate charts right from there. Okay. That's about it for the demo. Thanks, Bill. I should make you presenter again. I just see a poll. Okay. Are you currently using Office 365 as the current poll on the on your screen? A lot of people get voting here. Almost half or yes. Almost half or no. If we add the yeses and planning, we're at 60%. So we've got a 60-40 over the next year, maybe. Okay, thanks, everybody. Make sure you're still awake, that's all.
So we're going to return to the on-premise technology, or terminology, I mean, technology, terminology. So uh, what we have is uh, often the on-premise goes through the traditional volume licensing programs, you know, enterprise agreements that happen with um, the Microsoft uh, renewal process. The enterprise agreement is what it sounds like. Everything's uh, every laptop and desktop uh, in the enterprise has Windows and Office typically. Uh, project operates on something called a select agreement. So that means some selected uh, desktops are using project, but not everything, right? So the terminology here, we see project server uh, synonymous to project online, but in this case, uh, brings the data together on a server that you own and manage on your own premises. Uh, project Professional, um, again, you know, has the same capabilities we talked about in the cloud, but in this case, now you're directing it. Um, really, one of the one of the small differences, uh, if you have a Project Professional, when we went to the cloud from our own on-premise uh, project server capabilities, uh, we essentially changed the URL in the account. I mean, it's really not that different. And uh, Project Standard, which we mentioned before, is is Project Professional uh, scheduling engine without the capability to connect to the server. So again, we have um, uh, different levels of licensing and pricing here. You're not looking at a, uh, uh, a per month cost, but buying professional outright and buying, buying standard outright. Um, in this case, the prices would be defined on typically A, B, C, D levels of select agreements, which offer uh, 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 reduced prices as the volume of the desktops goes up. So these are not necessarily what you would be paying, but these are more retail prices. You notice on the Project Professional, um, if, if you're on premise, you can still rent Project Professional, right? So you don't, you don't have to spend a thousand dollars up front. You can still pay uh, a monthly rental cost, uh, even to be on your own premises. Um, so, so from a licensing standpoint, similar to what we did in the online stuff, we see. Um, a fully installed application for professional and standard, um, scheduling and costing in professional and standard, managing tasks. Uh, uh, when it says server, it really means going through the cloud, through the browser, uh, reporting and business intelligence across all three platforms, uh, sharing documents uh, is really going to happen on the server because that's where SharePoint is. Uh, now you start seeing some, uh, some of the middle check boxes disappear, right? So collaborating uh, with Skype for business presence, um, you're not going to get that from standard. Uh, resource management, uh, I, would, I, I might see, uh, say that this really meant to say enterprise resource management. I mean, you can manage resources in standard, but they're going to be sort of local resources that are not in the uh, enterprise resource pool. SharePoint uh, task syncing, again, standard doesn't do that, server professional do that. Same true for project online and project server synchronization. And uh, timesheets uh, from professional. Um, and really, I, I, you know, this is a little bit confusing. I mean, I'm assuming server means Cal. Is that how you're reading that, Bill? Yeah. Which means you actually could do timesheets from, from there, but, you, you know, there's probably a fourth column missing that would say just Cal, right? Yeah. So we had a fourth column there for Cal. You, have, you see a checkbox there for time sheets as well. Uh, demand management. This goes back to the portfolio stuff, right? So uh, these are capabilities that are done only on the server and used by using the cat, right? Again, you're using project project web app. Okay. Uh, so comparison. So so we talked about uh, uh, cloud and on premise, and uh, just a little bit of comparison, right? So if we think about the short term cost. Um, Obviously, online doesn't involve that, you know, paying licenses and hardware up front, so we see um, uh, a superior uh, advantage uh, from a cost, short-term cost. Long-term cost, um, you get a little bit better on the long-term cost with online. And, you know, there's a, there's a number of factors to go into this, right? This includes, uh, for example, what if you were upgrading, right? So, so this isn't just straight... Uh, line map on, on, on the uh, hardware and software. There's a total cost of ownership that includes uh, maintenance, um, uh, getting getting new patches, getting um, uh, new installations of new versions. So, 
So that's what really makes the uh, the long-term cost uh, in the cloud more superior. Support, uh, somewhere on both sides. Um, uh, there's differences. Um, I, I might give the online a slight advantage uh, from the standpoint that you'll get, you won't pay for support, it comes with the license. Uh, there are premier services that come with uh, the on-premise that you might need. Uh, the upgrades, uh, we just kind of talked about that, right? The online, the upgrades are going to happen automatically. On-premise, uh, not so much, right? So there's going to be an effort. If you go, for example, from Project 2013 to 2016, um, there's going to be a migration path that you have to execute. Uh, security, uh, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll say Microsoft is uh, probably stronger for security than the average uh, internal IT shop. Uh, you may argue, uh, depending on where you work, right? If you're with the NSA, uh, maybe you're better than Microsoft. I don't know, but that, in general, that's true. Uh, functionality. Uh, so we show uh, on premise um, uh, stronger. Um, Primarily because there's there, there's some more capabilities that are available on the premise. Would you would you agree with that, Phil? The, the functionality. I mean, the, the product functionality is similar, so there's something different, right? Yeah, the, the core product is the same in, in both, but uh, with on premise, you, you get you have access to the database. So a project online, you don't. So if you want to do uh, like SQL reporting services, that you can do on premises, but you can't do on on uh, on project online. So the answer was that new OData feature that we talked about, so you can render in Excel. Another nice feature on, on premise, you can restore, back up and restore individual project schedules if you uh, mess up or corrupt something, and uh, you don't get that capability in Project Online. So it's just a, a couple little things like that that are, that are slight differences, a little bit stronger in on premise, but, but generally they're the same core functionality is there in both products. And, and, and to that point, the, the similarity is true also with the integration, right? There, there are some, uh, you know, in general, if we talk about cloud versus on-premise, on it's not uncommon to say on-premise on is generally more open to all your other applications and databases, right? So, yeah. uh, time to implement, uh, a slight advantage on online. Uh, you know, there's a myth out there that cloud is, you know, like Jack and the Beanstalk, you know, you, you throw some magic beans out there and project turns itself on, well, it, it really doesn't, and um, our business is fundamentally the same, right? I mean, the stuff we do is is still in this world, right? So, um, so there's just, you know, some some of the more detail here, right, which is some of the things we talked about, about the upfront cost versus versus the long cost, long-term cost. Um, um, so, ongoing subscription fees. Um, but even though you pay them forever, you also get some some services for that forever, including the, the upgrades. Um, the support, um, you know, you, 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 you're more likely to be up a little longer, according to Microsoft. Again, that varies on uh, on what your uh, internal capabilities are. So they're relatively similar. Uh, we talked about the upgrade paths. There's really not anything new to say there. Um, one thing I'll add about the support, in the Office 365 side of it, um, where, where if you're doing administration there, you can uh, auto automatically connect to somebody at Microsoft and have them call you back. I did this just the other week. Where, so if you're on, on premises, you have to call into Microsoft and, and go through all the different menus and it takes a while to get support. But uh, I was able to just click a button and say, call me at this number, and within a half an hour, somebody called and worked me through the, the problem all for free. Yeah. And the support has gotten stronger and stronger over the years. There was a there was a time I would be brave enough to say that I had more than support. I'm not sure that's true anymore. I'm pretty sure it's not true. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so it's gotten really strong. Um, security. There, there's some there's some uh, certifications here that uh, not everybody uh, has uh, in their internal on-premise capabilities. Uh, Bill already addressed these things about you know the. Uh, uh, SQL reporting services, some of the capabilities and some of the lack between the uh, the online um, integration. Um, we talked about the CSOM bill. That's that's been a, that's been a, a, a new addition that has made the integration better. Uh, time to implement. Um, so again, we talked about the setting up of the hardware infrastructure and the installation of the software. And it's it's you know in our proposals, it's a day or two, so it's not it's not a big gap, but there's a difference. Okay, so I talked about um, building a project, 
blueprint. You know, project has uh, primarily uh, two strata: the top down from the portfolio, and the bottom up from the uh, execution of projects. And you know, we, um, from a solution uh, approach, you know, there's there's a, uh, a series of questions that you know we go through. I'm not going to. We're running out of time here, so I'm going to make this short. Uh, are you successfully able to manage projects individually? Right? If you can't manage a project. Project server is not going to do it. Project online is not going to do it. Right? So. Uh, there's, there's, you know, do, do we have the capability of project management? Do we have processes that are standardized? Um, are these processes operating and designed? You know, uh, are they adopted? Is it is a good question? The process is there, but it's sitting on the shelf. Um, are they harmonized at the enterprise level? Right. So that that's really about adoption. Uh, are you using the project effectively on the desktop? Right? A lot of people think, oh, hey, we've been using the project for a while. We'll just wrap all those MPP files and throw them out there. And, it usually doesn't work that way. Um, our methodology is, is three stages, right? We use this thing called vision where we look at uh, process and technology, people, organization, skills, and governance or change management, and, and bring that together as a current state, cast against a future state, oftentimes a fairly wide gap. How do we help create a vision to bring these four components together and a roadmap, which is really a mini, uh, mini uh, portfolio of initiatives to get better at project management in these four dimensions, right? So, so we certainly recommend that, whether you're in the cloud or not. Uh, the implementation is, is a fairly standard approach to do. Uh, not all, but then, you know, again, what we're trying to focus on here is this is not just about technology, right? It is about aligning the processes and the configurations and the customizations and the skills of the organization. So, um, and, and last but not least, and, and, off, and often uh, underpowered in a lot of our implementations from a customer standpoint, is this idea of how we how we put a, a, a real change management process in, in place for the customer uh, to really transform the, 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 the culture, right? So uh, so we're kind of out of time. So I'm going to just going to um, uh, not spend any time on this. You know what we really look for with a vision is success comes by planning up front. We see uh, the industry sees uh, 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 unacceptable, unsuccessful uh, implementations. With a vision phase, with an adoption phase, you know, you, you really enhance your odds of, um, of getting this right, you know, avoiding a lot of risks. Uh, the partnering model, um, Microsoft, you know, provides the software and the platform and the supports and builds and ongoing releases, and uh, we bring the services to really make this provide the value that you expect uh, from the platform. Okay, so we have a methodology. This is kind of on column two of the VIA methodology. Our implementation approach, and uh, are you currently using Project 2016 now? Our final poll, and then we're going to wrap it up. Okay. Okay. So a lot of people, a lot of opportunity to move to it. Great. So the prerequisite check, by the way, this will be a, uh, uh, a webinar recording on our website. So if you want to go back and read some of these things I'm flying through, uh, these are some of the steps that we recommend uh, to get down the path if you're thinking about doing this. Uh, I'd recommend you call us and let you help. Mm -hmm. um, that whole still Okay, there we go. So there's the prereq check. Um, our service offerings, there's more than this on our website, but these are the things we do around project. Uh, 2016 book just came out, so if you need a book on it, we got that out on Amazon. Um, so at this time, we're going to turn it back over to Daniel. If anybody wants to stay on? Thank you. We did get several uh, questions, technical questions, especially during the demo. Uh, one was, uh, Will the colors that are in the project center, will they be reflected in an Excel spreadsheet if you upload that to Excel? So anything that you see in, in Project Online, it has a, a built-in uh, export to Excel. The downside is, unfortunately, the colors don't come across, but the data values do. So if we had low, medium, and high, if it has red, yellow, and green showing in Project Online, unfortunately, you're going to get the value of low, medium, and high when it exports to Excel. All right. Now, with that old data, you could also you could create a report though that uses conditional formatting, and and then that would show 
uh, it would just render it in an Excel, a separate Excel report, and then, then you could do the uh, formatting and show those colors. Yeah, you should probably hire a Microsoft partner to help you with that, though. Would you say, no. <laughs> Good idea. Will the availability to send tasks from PWA to Outlook ever be available? It is already. Yes, you can uh, synchronize with Outlook, and uh, that's, that's actually been been out for a, a couple of versions. It was on 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 premises first, and it is available in Project Online now as, as well. Excellent. Including you have your e email in Office 365. Right. Yeah. You, you, so you would need to have Exchange on Office 365 for yeah. it to work. And, and it, but it doesn't send. If you're on Exchange on uh, on premise, will Project Online talk to it? Yeah, and, and actually, what it'll when you get a new task assigned to you, it'll show up in your tasks on Project Online. But you, optionally, you can have that show up in your Excel as an email, and then there's a link there. You click on that link in, from the email, right. and it'll take you to the task in Project Online. But you can also synchronize it to your task list that's in uh, in in your email in Outlook, and it will even let you do some basic uh, updates of percent complete and things like that. And synchronize that back into uh, to your project schedule. Excellent. We do have a couple more questions still coming in, so and we still have plenty of attendees. So we'll, we'll stay on as long as you guys stay on. Thank you for uh, sticking around. Uh, another question we had was, can you use Project 2013 to connect to the cloud? Uh, well, <laughs> yes and no. <laughs> you can until June 30th. Right. So uh, what, what happened is, is because of a lot of the improvements that were made in 2016 uh, on the on the project online side of it, uh, Microsoft is phasing out the ability to connect 2013. So if you're on 2013 right now and using project online, you can still connect, but you will need to upgrade to project 2016. And it's very it's very simple. Uh, since you're already on project online, it's all through Office 365. You can just download right through your your 365 portal and get the new version. It's a fascinating um, feature. You know, they've gone to these uh, online uh, download and try to install it. It's really wonderful going through 365. It's silly, but it's one of my favorite features. Uh, and the last question we have so far, you can feel free to keep sending them in. Uh, how do you set up a template document library? So when we looked at the, the project sites earlier, you you uh, it'll create a default site. When you when you just install it and create a new project, then you can modify that site, uh, that that that, doc, that project site itself. Um, with uh, so, for instance, if you modify, enter, enter the folder structures you want, if you want any logos or graphics, uh, we even had one one client where they uh, wanted a a flow a, a process flow to show on every one of, at the top of every one of their their pages with hyperlinks. So you would just click on uh, on an icon on that process flow, it will pull up a document that went with it. So you can do all of that in, in one of your existing sites, and then you at the end when you're when you're happy with it, you do a save as a template. Then it becomes a template that's available for when you create new projects, you just use that customized template, and then uh, every new project will use that new format that you devised. And that's all the questions we had come in. So thank you everyone so much. And Especially thank you for those who were interested enough to stay over time. Uh, I will be sending out an email to you. Look out an affirmative email for uh, Deej Kala at Project Assistance. Uh, it'll have uh, good follow-up material, including the PDF for these slides, uh, a video recording uh, on YouTube and our website of this entire presentation that you can save uh, for use or, or show it to other people within your organization. Uh, directions for getting Category B uh, PDUs. Uh, we always get that question, uh, so look out for that. And uh, maybe most importantly, a coupon code for our project training guide. We, we just did the 2016 update, um, so you can get a discount on that, and we will send the instructions for that. Um, so thank you again, everyone, for showing up. Uh, thank you so much, Gus and Bill, for, for, for divulging your expertise on us, and we look forward to being in touch with you. Thank you.